On today's Pots and Trials, which is brought to you with the support of Mr Fothergill Seeds and Cobra Garden, I'm going to be in the veg plot and I've got a surprise for you in the polytunnel and I'm going to be outside dealing with some long grass. Well, I've started in my little orchard this week and it's where we grow a range of fruit trees and I do very little mowing in here. It's where I keep my hens and I split it in half. So the hens have been in here for a few weeks now, they're in the other half. And as a result, the grass is quite tufty. It's strange, they'll eat the grass, but they don't eat things like buttercups and the oxide daisy, which is lovely. So we get the lovely wildflowers in here. And there's loads of daffodils in the spring as well. So what I want to do now is just to give it a bit of a tidy up. Um, and as you can see here, the daffodils that are around the base of all the trees have all started to go brown and die back now. It's early Early June these flowered in April so they've had at least six weeks since they flowered which they need for the goodness to go back into the bulb so it's a tidy up not easy to mow this with a conventional mower to be fair so various ways you can do it a simple way is to use a good old-fashioned pair of shears and it's literally just a case of giving everything a chop down and that's quite easy to use where things have bent down to the ground like that and then we can just rake that all off and that can go onto the compost heap. Or you could use a sickle. Everybody used to have sickles years ago. This is a, a modern one, very sharp, and you've got to have a bit of a swinging action with this. So it's just a case of hacking it down like that. And we can see it makes a really neat job if we get down there into the base of it. And again, that can then be raked off and put onto the compost heap. But if you've got a bigger area and you want to be a bit more mechanical, then a strimmer is the ideal thing to do. And I've got a piece over there that we're gonna do now. A strimmer is a really useful bit of kit in the garden. You can use it for all sorts of things, lawn edging, dealing with rough grass and weeds. And you can see it's been a bit overgrown here. Uh, the hens haven't eaten this. There's, there's docks in here and some thistles and the remnants of the old daffodils. So a strimmer is ideal. And the one I like to use is a battery powered one. You haven't got to mess around with petrol or long extension lead. So this is a, a lithium ion battery and it's got a nylon cord there that whizzes around very quick and cuts everything. So they're really light and easy to use so it's just a case of switch it on you've got two settings uh, turbo and eco but because this is quite thick I'm going on to turbo and away we go As you can see, that makes really light work of it. And it's good at long grass and short grass as well. So you can get quite a nice finish. So I'll finish this and then we're gonna pop over to the veg plot. Well, in the veg garden, things are doing fairly well. Considering how dry it was in May and April, plants are now getting established. I'm having to do a fair bit of watering. So if it's dry where you are, remember water early morning or late evening to get the best effect out of it. Potatoes are doing well, onions, beans are all growing well. Uh, the roots, crops that we sowed directly at the beginning of April are all growing nicely. And even the ones under the carrot frame we had a bit of a disaster. If you remember, the first batch of seedlings were eaten off by slugs and snails, but I sowed again and they're growing nicely just a week or two behind. But what I need to do now these are beetroot here and these are uh, parsnips they need to be thinned um, just to make sure they've got enough growth to develop so in the case of beetroot they often grow in clusters you can buy single seeded beetroot but very often they're in clusters you get two or three seedlings appearing at the same place so all you do is literally look inside the row and where you've got a little cluster it's just simply a case of pulling one or two out so that the idea with the beetroot is we want them to be spaced two or three inches apart so that that lovely root can develop. Don't waste these, these are absolutely delicious. If you're picking lettuce and other salad leaves from the garden, use the tops of these beetroot while they're young and tender and mix them into salads. Same thing applies to um, the parsnips here. Uh, I planted these two or three seeds every few inches um, and we've got a good germination. Have you come to help or you've just come to watch? Why don't you, you're in the way, I think. You're between me and a camera. 
okay, where you've got your parsnips uh, and they've all germinated well, then what we want is one parsnip per station. So it's simply just a case of looking at the little group like we've got here, um, and it seems a waste that you're going to pull them out, but you're going to select the strongest one and pull the others out. Any weeds that are there at the same time, just give it a little firm. All the energy will now go into that and that will make a lovely one. I think you could eat these as well. I've never tried them, but they won't be transplantable. So it's either eat them or on the compost heap. And the other thing is, don't worry if you haven't sown any veg yet. It's still plenty of time. It's only early June. So you've still got time to sow directly into the garden. Things like beetroot and radishes and lettuce and chard and spinach and beans. So there's a whole range of vegetables you can sow now, keep them watered, and you'll get lovely tender crops later on in the summer. But I've got one last thing I want to show you in the polytunnel. I promised a surprise. So let's go and have a look at that. Well, I wanted to finish off by bringing you into the polytunnel just to look at the strawberries, which are doing really, really well. These were potted as bare root runners late last summer. It's a variety called Maulin Centenary. And because they're in the polytunnel with no extra heat, they've just come on that little bit early and produce these wonderful big berries that are perfect. If you're growing strawberries at home, either indoors or outdoors, remember when the fruits are swelling and starting to ripen, they need plenty of water and they need a weekly feed. A tomato fertilizer, which is high in potash, is absolutely perfect. Now, we've grown these for our granddaughter, Gracie, who's two and a half. She lives in New Zealand. And when we were there in January, it was strawberry season and she loves strawberries. So I promised I would grow her some for when they visited and they should be here with us this week. But obviously, because of coronavirus, Virus, they can't be with us. So Gracie, I just want you to know that Grandad has grown the strawberries and Granny and Grandad will eat them for tea with some cream for you and they are absolutely delicious. Mmm, they are so sweet. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and for all the likes and shares. We've now got well over 7,000 followers, which is great and all down to you. Next time, I'm going to be growing veg in containers and we're going to be planting flowers out for cut flower. For now, though, I'm going to eat my strawberries. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye.